Hello everybody, welcome back to the Klaus Crafts Restoration Restore and all that channel. Uh, we hope you've missed us, me and the crow. Good to see you back. Today's video, I'm going to get right to it. I always get right to it, sometimes I forget. Today's uh, video is going to be about a table saw, but a very, very, they actually make them smaller than this. But this is a small table saw. Really good to use for, it's not heavy duty or nothing, but you get the job done. Hey, like it. I'm sending like a normal a normal monkey. Everybody knows ain't normal. What in the hell this guy doing with so many table saws? What is that? Third one? Different size? Even got a little teeny teeny tiny table saw. I seen it. It's a, I think it's a 20 some volt motor or something. I don't know what the hell it is, but it's really little. Man, you're telling me. Man, you can saw everything with that table saw, except the stuff that you can't saw with it. But all the stuff you can saw with it, man, get the wood in there, get the PVC pipe in there, get the central board in there, get other stuff in there you can cut, but don't put no chain in it or nothing, no uh, eye beams or anything, and you'll be fine. Who the hell going to put an eye beam or a chain in a table saw? Man, if there's a warning like that on there, you know somebody's done, gone, done it. That's why, the, why it's there. Too many stupid people in the world end up chopping something off and blaming the manufacturer. But they didn't put on there you couldn't chop a car in half. Gee, I know what this type of people you're talking about. Dumbasses. They're like, oh, I'm suing because it didn't say on there not to stick your foot in front of the blade. Yeah, man, what in the hell going on? Man, you that stupid. You better stay away from power tools, kitchen appliances, any electricity thing that uses all that stuff. Man, even, don't even use no hand saw. Don't use no hand, don't use nothing. Pay somebody to do it for you. You ain't got the money to pay them, don't do nothing. And you that dumb. Problem with dumb people is they don't know they're dumb. That's a problem. Think they're smart. That's the worst type of person. Somebody dumb thinking they're smart. Well, go ahead and watch this table saw video. Me and the crow is going to move on out. And we'll all see you next time on the Klaus Restoration Restores channel. Have fun. Do all sorts of stuff, and we'll see y'all later. Ain't no joke right now. I can't think of one. Our uh, joke department's down. It'll do you good to not hear one of them jokes sometimes. Those things are getting pretty bad lately. Man, last time I heard a bad joke. When was the last time I heard a bad joke? It was on his channel. That's where I heard it. Man, that thing was awful. Man, I'm telling you what's truth. Last time, that last couple of jokes on his channel, man. It's one of the people didn't start throwing bricks. Well, we'll see you guys next time on the Klaus Restoration Restores channel and all that. And we hope you had fun. We had fun. Me and the crow, didn't we? My butt! Say it right, didn't we? Damn man, we had fun. We had so much fun that fun come to us to find out how to have fun. Well, that's how much fun we had. We're still having it. Woo! Get it on, get it on. So much fun. Do a little dance. Make a little love. Get down tonight, bump, 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 bump. Get down tonight, bump, 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 bump. I'm gonna get copyrighted for that, YouTube. Man, you knocked my damn tree off. I only got two trees. What you, what's what you doing over there? Man, you getting down with your bad self over there. Yeah, I'm over here minding my own business, and you over there shaking your thing, ruining my set. Man, that tree, poor thing. I'm gonna have to get that tree back up here. I feel naked without it. We'll start talking about being naked again. Man, that's all you do. Naked monkey this, naked monkey that. Man, I'm going to go over there and put a fur coat on you and super glue the damn thing on. I'll put some extra feathers on you. Super glue them on. You look like Big Bird over there. I'll dye you yellow. It'll be like the monkey and Big Bird show over here from now on. Man, you get people really going to enjoy that. Big fat crow over there looking like Big Bird. Well, we're going to go now, and we'll see you later, and goodbye, and I'm going to go get my tree, and I'll see you later next time. Bye. I got a mini table saw. It's got this auto rod on it. Open it up. Take a look at it.
here's the paperwork. Looks like it's all in Chinese. Oh, stuck. Okay, the first thing to come out of the box, saw blade. And to my surprise, it is a very good saw blade. It is a, here's the piece that goes in the center in case it don't fit your uh, saw. Very good saw blade, it has a whole lot of teeth. It's 82, eight inch blade, 82. That means it uh, cut smooth, because it has a lot of teeth. Here's all the packaging materials. I'll put it over here for the painters to uh, put all over the yard. Yeah. I won't put the saw blade on in this video. This is just a show and tell. On this side, this is real. This is real life. This is not that. I can do it all at once. This is not that funky, everything's perfect editing. This is real life. In real life, people struggle to get these things out. Alrighty. Got it. Here's this here. Put on the saw blade with it. What's that? Among other things. What is it? It's a tool to put on the saw blade and other stuff. The guard. And here's the guard stuff. I'm going to get stuffed up in here. Yeah, like that. This here goes, Hold it. This here goes over the blade. This here goes over the blade so you won't chop yourself in the next week. And this also has a, uh, like a dust extraction on it. So it goes that way. This is the dust extraction. The blade goes up in here. So you're uh, sawing with it. You won't chop yourself up. Here's the extension. And the extension legs. The extension will go on the other side. Where did that come from? Here's the other pieces that go to hold this thing down. In here. So, What's made of uh, seems to be a magnetic check. This is an on-off magnet. So you put it on like this and it's off, it don't stick. But if you turn it on, it sticks. Want to get it loose, turn it back off. Okay, here's the other, I don't know what that is either. Just gonna be looking at that book before I put everything together. This is just an unboxing, showing uh, what this thing is. Here's the push stick. See the push stick for my big paper saw. It's done for already. So the next video I'll be making of this that you'll see is this thing with a blade in it. It's got a blade in it. It's got a blade in it already. But it's a big tooth. It's got a big tooth blade in it. So you know what that means. That means I'm gonna change that blade for that other one, finer too. And this, where the hell's the, where's the thing that raises this up? Oh, I gotta get acquainted with this thing, I can't find the. Look, it's supposed to be 1800 watts. Everything's broke in Chinese or Japanese, I don't know. So I'll take it for what it is. These things here screw off. Screw loose, you can move this back and forth. 
when it's in place, screw it back down. You want to make sure it's labeled. You can put a label behind it. To make sure it's labeled. This right here will slide around. It does not lock in. So when you're using it, it may vibrate and move. How do you stop it? This here. It's got a hole right here. You put this knob in. Put it over to zero. Tighten this up. No longer moves. My wife figured that out. Instructions are slim to none. The blade lowers and raises by this knob here. As you can see, it already has a blade in it. So that is a ripping blade. You can see it coming up. Because of the cuts I want to make, I do not want a ripping blade because it causes a lot of damage to whatever you're cutting because they have very few teeth on them. So I'm going to change it later to this one. This here is the rotation of the blade. It's this way, it rotates that way. It's this way, it rotates that way. You want it rotating toward you, not away from you. So we'll go on like this. As this guard here that you can use or not use, so if you want to use it, I've already ever used these things. So let's do this. And we just now found out why I don't use these things. It's not separating enough to get down in here. It's supposed to sit down in here, but the separation is not getting enough separation in there. So anyhow, if you use this, it would sit down in here like this. Then you push something under it, it raises up, and you take it out, it goes back down. But this, in my opinion, it is good for safety. If you want to use it, use it. I'm going to recommend using it because I'm going to have somebody come and say, I chopped my finger off, and it's his fault. No, it ain't. I don't use this because the cuts I make and the things I cut, this thing gets in my way. So, safety first, if you want to use it. I have never used these on any table saw I have ever owned them. Never. I got all 10 fingers. This here is that extension. Put it in here. It's got these things that come out and you put it in and lock it in place. The legs come down. It's a little bit wider. Take these out, push it in a little bit farther. These little rotating things, put it in a little bit farther. I don't know if I use that or not. Is a, a little over a hundred dollars in cost. You're not going to be getting a precision machine, but it's going to be precise enough to do whatever you want with it. I'm not going to drag out like some other. YouTube channels, I'm not going to drag out the squares, I'm not going to be re measuring every little thing on here because that's completely stupid. If you want the machine, buy it. If you don't, don't buy it. You know, you don't need to be nitpicking everything. You get what you pay for, and this is a hundred, around hundred and twenty-five dollar machine. You get what you pay for. Like a tin top, it's kind of thick, kind of sturdy, it's not cast iron. Blades lined up good. If you actually want to see the blade line, we'll go ahead and look at it. My spider collection. Roll this thing up. I'm going to use this mostly for crafting. I'm not going to be. Now you're not going to buy a table saw like this and run a four before through it. If that's your plan, then your then your brain is drying up, slim to nothing. Because it's not what a saw like this is made for. You're not going to buy a saw like this and throw big giant pieces of lumber on it and start making furniture. That's not what this is for. See, it's level. It's 90 degrees. This here is for small work, crafting work. I'm using this for is uh, cutting center board, things like that. 
uh, crafting materials, uh, thin pieces of wood I need to cut, all of that stuff. That's why I'm going to use this blade so the cuts will be nice and smooth. Is this table worth the money I paid for it? Yes, it is. Because this table will be, this is perfect for my crafting. I've got a big Bosch table saw in the garage that I use for all the heavy work. This is not a heavy work saw. Just because it comes with big giant blades. So if you want one of these, I do recommend it. Okay. But before I tell you if you should own one of these, I'm going to hook it up tomorrow and I'm going to try it because it's about 8, 8 p.m. now. And I'm going to try it, run some things through it before I start videoing so in case something goes wrong won't be a lot of swear words and wasted time recording and then uh, I'll take a video I'll finish up the video of this and then I'll tell you if uh, it's really worth having or not okay we're gonna finish up the review started last night I changed the blade in it already the blade I took this blade out put the other blade in now I did have a problem getting the blade out this here fit on the harbor, but this here, either end, won't fit. It's supposed to be this end here. It's it won't grab it. Jumps on to be tight. So how I got it off was I used this right here. This here is how I got it off. I use this one right here. Really, I use this right here to get it off. And I use the impact driver. And on the impact driver, I have one of these that can put this here on. And I didn't use any of these because it's an impact driver. Jerk it real hard, and it comes off counterclockwise. So we jerk it that way real hard, pop it loose. And I actually use the impact driver to put it back on with. If you don't have something like this to get the blade off. They have a bit of trouble getting it off. Change the blade. All you do, all you do right here is you remove these four screws. This slides up. It has two end pieces on it here sticking out that slide. You can slide this thing forward or backward. Get it out of the way. I'll show you how I've done it for people that need to uh, see it because it's uh, good to see these things. Just go in here. Remove the four screws. And once these four screws are out, we just lift it and slide this up. So the lock pulled it up like that. Now the blades in here. We can move this thing up out of the way. Use the tools to grab a hold of this. Turn this left. The blade comes off. Put the other blade on. But like I said, I had to use an impact driver on this. So I couldn't get it. This has no lock on it. You have to use the big wrench on this nut here and the small one to hold the arbor here. And uh, it just couldn't do it. This nut was on too tight. So the impact driver is what got that off. And when you're done, slide back up the screw holes. Put the screws back in. If you're not reaping anything big, you want your stuff to look good when you cut it, use the blade with the most seam. Blade with the most teeth, you have less tear out and a smoother cut. This is how my table saw here is going to be used for crafting work. I need a blade with as many teeth as I can get. And I'm lucky it come with a. Uh, that rusty what's that for? That rusty what's that for? Uh, that rusty. What's that for? That rusty. This one is for uh, smooth cuts, a lot of teeth. This one here. 
um, for rough cuts, big pieces of wood. They want, uh, you don't care how it turns out. It's not really going to be seen. Going to be covered up or something. So you don't care. It turns out like that. Or if you're ripping it down, it'll be put to a planer. You don't care if it gets ripped up pretty how bad. Thick the wood. To a planer anyway. How thick the wood you can cut though? You can cut up to. Let's find out. Let's raise this thing up. As high as it go. Find out how thick of a piece of wood you can cut with this thing. I mean. Uh, Rock wood, what that rock blade? Blades are the same. I did not But you can cut the one, cut the other one. So you want to just be a rough cut on this smooth one. Here's as high as the blade will go. So that's ah, the uh, biggest the cut we're going to get. So if you're running a piece of, uh, running a piece of wood through there, it's as high as you can get. But if you're cutting one that's double the thickness of this, you can run it, run it through one side and then flip it over end for end and then run it through the other side and then uh, don't turn it around because if your your blade will get a cut in a different spot on the other side on the other side it's not perfectly centered if you don't cut one side turn it around and then run it back through because you'll make cut in a different different spot when you run it through you flip it over end for end and run it through again make sure that this this side that is against the fence when you cut, stays against the fence when you cut the other side. So if you're cutting on this side, don't turn it around. You get the other side, you know what I'm saying? Here are the specs on the saw. Some people would pretend to know this, memorize it and stuff. Why? You got 1800 watts, 8 inch table saw, 8 inch table saw bench cutting machine, we turned at a 45 degree angle, it says here it's a multifunctional small chainsaw, it's not a chainsaw, it's China, the Chinese wrote this, ignore the chainsaw part, it's a table saw, the original silicone steel blade, the table can be extended and the board can extend to increase the working area. 4.5 centimeter saw blade lifting. So look at that 4.5. And board can, uh, wait a minute, I already did. Saw blade diameter 200 millimeters. That's an 8 inch blade. 1800 watts. Powerful motor. Speed up to 5,000 revolutions per minute. RPM. The motor. The motor on this, the motor on this machine is a hybrid motor. What's a hybrid? Still good. What's a hybrid motor? What's a hybrid? Hybrid motor. <laughs> okay, so the cut I'm going to do now is uh, we do some plyboard, find where it is, make sure the blade and the teeth are reaching up here. Above the wood that you're cutting. Make sure that the blade height is the teeth are above your wood that you're cutting. Not too high, not too low either. Right and now it's plugged in, ready to go. Thank you, Steve. The only thing to do now, actually, this is kind of high. You shouldn't be cutting stuff that's this high when the saw seat up that high. This is a test. Push stick. I'm getting this because I'm pretty much at eye level with this thing. All right, get more. Easy cut on it, cleaned it, 
clean the wood up good as it cuts. It's a nice, it's a good sharp saw blade. I'm going to aluminum with that too. Not that I don't know. So, so, I, so I like it. It's, it's a good, it's a good blade. Good saw. Good 90 degree angle. No light coming through. Double it up this. Yeah, it's good. It's cutting good at a 90 degree angle. You can also cut at a 45 degree angle. Just loosen this knob up here. Just loosen the concealer. <laughs> just loosen this knob up here. You don't have to take it all the way out. Just loosen it up. And you can turn it with this or you can lift it with this. It don't matter. And once it hits 45 and it's as far as it'll go that way, screw that back in. There's your 45 degree angle cut. Your blade's at 45 degree angle. How do you know it's at 45 degree? Because it says. You just hope the right. <laughs> hope the right. Put back on my. Lock it back in on the 90 degree angle. So here's the 45 degree angle. It's good, right? Nice 45 degree angle. Now the good thing about it is you got this roll dial here, so you can choose your uh, settings without. You could really eagle eye in on your settings by turning this. Like I say, at the top of it, some kind of hard metal. I don't really know what that is. Let's hope that won't rust. But uh, you've seen how it cuts. You've seen what it can do. I give this thing a thumbs up. Like I said, if you're running four before us through it and stuff and using it to build a house, and then it don't function right or something bends or breaks, then you got you stupid because this saw is not meant to build a house. This saw is not meant for hard, laborious work. This saw is meant for light duty work. Picture frames, build the dog house. Window frames, like those brown ones on the window outside, to make with it. It's made with the... Uh... So this is a light duty saw, but I'm not saying that cut popsicle sticks with, sticks with it either. Because you can get some good, raunchy wood running through this thing. But uh, like I said, don't force not this thing to do nothing because this is not a Bosch or a DeWalt or something like that. This is a name brand, actually. It is a name brand one. It's got a warranty and everything. And uh, it's got a, even got a 15-day warranty. If the saw does not function properly or something's misaligned when uh, you can't get it lined back up yourself, maybe the arbor's bent, something like that, factories, I mean, they're, they're popping these things out of me in a week probably. So you're going to have something Gonna, there are going to be bad ones coming out that nobody knows about because there's just so many of these made at one time. But if you get one that don't function properly, they actually give you 15 days to try it. And when you return it, the company that sells this pays the freight charge back. So uh, you get your money refunded, and they pay the freight charge both. So you're not losing you're not losing anything. And it also has a uh, I didn't see the other warranty, but I think it's like a two-year warranty on the motor and things. They replace it if something or repair it, replace it if something happens to it. So you're actually you buy this, you're actually covered. The saw actually has the phone number of the company that made it on it. The web page www. Can't even pronounce that word. Dot com. But it's everything's on it. You can contact the people. The only thing that I noticed that this one didn't come with is right up here on the side. Um, 
but I saw but I saw uh, these before some have these covers on them that you can just punch it and the saw goes off but some I've seen don't have this so I'm thinking that some of these saws they may have the cover on it and some don't because this one don't have no hinges or anything to put a cover that you can bump to stop it but this button here is protruding really far out so it's easy to hit so if you turn it on it's easy to hit and if you ever break or rip this rubber you want to repair that or put another one back the sawdust will get in there you'll try to turn it on or off and you'll find out that it's not coming on and off as easy as getting you're getting duck sawdust back in there but this saw here i get the saw an a plus and two thumbs up because if you're looking for a nice saw that uh, that you actually do a whole lot of work with to buy this saw this here you unscrew this here and move it around and then tighten it back up it lines itself up so you don't actually don't have to have a straight edge but me might be paranoid about it I've already used a straight edge on it a couple of times to make sure it stays straight but uh, I recommend this all. I give it a two thumbs up. Nice, beautiful push stick. Miter gauge. Take the cover if you choose to use it. So like I said, I can't use it. Those are the things I cut with it. It gets in the way. Table extension. The push stick, come on this side. The push stick when you're not using it. And the push stick, put it in here like so. Put the other side in like this. Push it like so. Put the other side in like this. Push it like so. Put the other side in like this. Okay, there's your push stick. The saw. Get that out of the way. The saw cord. Which the lag was sitting on it. Saw cord. I'm not using it. it goes here. Now this saw will be stored somewhere beautiful and nice where it will be so clean. I'm not going to let it get dirty because this saw is going to be. Like I said, 10 million times. It's going to be used for crafting. I don't want it to get dirty. I don't want it to get all messed up. But at the same time, I don't know if I can store it in the house because it's so big. Maybe I can find a place in the house to put it. But when I use it, I can bring it out. Okay, with that said, I hope you like the presentation of this Zenata, Zenata Saw Z-X-I-N-N-A-D-A. Again, that is X-I-N-N-A-D-A. DA saw. So, uh, hope you like the presentation of this saw. Hope you like what you see. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Put some comments in the comment section below. Good, bad. Keep the good ones, delete the bad ones, report them, all that stuff. And uh, for, report them for smart alecky comments and get rid of them. <laughs> it's the truth. We'll keep that stuff. You don't got nothing nice to say. You don't see anything at all. And, uh, Buy one of these things if you want one, if you need one, you don't need it by it anyway. But use it in the future. I'll see you next time on the Klaus Restoration Channel, and so will the monkey and the crow. See you next time. Bye.